Have you ever wondered how you remember how to ride your bike despite not doing it for years, yet you can't seem to remember what your professor told you last week or even what you had for dinner two nights ago? How we make memory has been widely researched for decades, and although the exact mechanism of how our brain stores and creates this information isn't exactly clear, we know more than ever from the physiology to the communication how exactly the brain does this. My name is Matt, I'm a junior doctor working in London and in this video I'm going to be talking about how the brain makes and stores memory and how we can use that to ultimately create a better learning experience for us to optimise our memory. I'll be breaking this down into two sections. First of all, how exactly our brain works and what memory is. And secondly, how we can improve our minds for the best learning outcomes and memory retention. This will be the first video in a series where I break down how exactly memory works and the strategies we can employ to build ourselves a stronger mind. So if you wanted to see more, feel free to check out my channel and subscribe to see more videos. The brain is an incredible machine which essentially governs everything you know, feel and sense. And we've known this since 170 BC when the Roman physician Galen essentially suggested that the brain was what determined personality and cognition. It is what allows us to detect and feel external stimulus and respond in an appropriate manner. Anatomically, our brain can be split into several parts based on its function. Through various experiments throughout the years, scientists have determined the three most important areas of your brain in creating and storing memory, and these are the hippocampus, amygdala, and the cortex. The hippocampus is mainly involved in the formation of short-term memory and also involved in converting short-term memory to long-term memory. The amygdala is involved in memory storage associated with emotions such as fear and the cortex aside from involvement in higher execution and thought and function is involved in the storage of long-term memory. The brain is what stores information or what we call memory but it's important to establish first that there is no such thing as memory or rather it doesn't exist as an object of permanence per se but instead a process of encoding, storing and retrieving information in your brain. You see, the brain is made up of millions and billions of cells called neurons which join together through synapses and conduct electrical activity and they often fire at rates of up to 120 meters per second or 270 miles per hour. When you recall information, you are essentially activating that specific pattern of neurons and synapses associated with this piece of information in your brain or memory formation. And this pattern is what allows your brain to retrieve that specific information and send it to your executive conscience. So essentially, memory is an operation of specific neural circuits in the brain. The process of making memory is, at its fundamentals, the strengthening of neural circuits that transmit electrical impulses. And although we're not 100% certain, the most widely accepted theory of how we create memory is the standard two-stage model, which encompasses three main pathways. Sensory registration, which is when information is received from the world around you, such as touching, hearing, or sensing. This information is then turned into short-term memory or working memory and usually lasts about 20 to 30 seconds. For example, when you're doing a math problem and you're working with numbers and an equation, you'll find that you're able to remember the numbers long enough to do the problem itself, but shortly after you'll have forgotten it. The third stage is long-term memory when information is stored in the brain for an extended period of time and this can range anywhere from a minute to your entire lifetime. When long-term memories form, the hippocampus essentially retrieves information from the working memory or short-term memory and begins to change the brain's physical wiring in a process known as synaptic plasticity. And essentially what this is, is that the more you access a memory or use a specific pattern of neural circuits, the stronger those connections will be and vice versa in that the less you use them, the weaker they'll be. Your brain will automatically detect these changes in the firing of these cells and through a bunch of molecular changes and biochemical alterations will strengthen those commonly used neural circuits while replacing those that are less frequently used. And this process of rewiring actually occurs most commonly in sleep. Finally, aside from short-term and long-term memory, it's quite helpful to distinguish between the other types of memory. Implicit or non-declarative memory is essentially the procedural learning of information, things like how you ride your bike or how you drive your car. And these are processes governed by the cerebellum and basal ganglia, which are predominantly motor-based. Because this information isn't stored in the cortex, it isn't as susceptible to synaptic plasticity and the rewiring process, which is why you still remember how to ride your bike despite not having done it for several years. The other important type of memory is explicit or declarative memory and these are facts or pieces of information that you will actively try to remember and this can be further split into two things. Episodic memory which are events that occur to an individual and these are learned very quickly but also forgotten very quickly 
And then there is semantic memory, which is general knowledge or information, such as specific facts that you learn. So great. Now we know how our brain creates, stores, and retrieves memory. But how is this relevant to us and how do we use this for our own learning? I think there are a couple of things that we can take away from this. First of all, we know that there is no such thing as memory. Essentially what it is, is that it is a series or a pattern of neural circuits that fire simultaneously to retrieve a specific piece of information in the brain. What I'm trying to say is you can't just make memory. There isn't a specific magical formula that just lets you remember just like that. If you want to retain something, you need to strengthen those neural circuits in your brain and adjust our neural system to encode in a specific way. We know that the process of memory formation is split into three stages and really what it means to remember things is essentially to convert it from short-term memory to long-term memory. This consolidation process occurs through synaptic plasticity, which means that the more neurons fire in a specific pattern, the more your brain is likely to think that it's important and to keep it and strengthen it. It also means that if you're trying to remember a specific piece of information, just coming across it once and reading it in a textbook just a single time isn't going to do the trick. If you want to embed it into your brain, you'll need to process it in your head a few more times. We also know that different parts of the brain and different pathways exist to store different types of memory. The more associations that you link with a piece of information you're trying to remember, such as with existing knowledge already in your brain, emotions, or even procedural movements, the more likely you are to retain it. It also means that when you're trying to learn a new skill, such as learning an instrument like the violin, the more times you practice, the more likely you are to feel more confident with it. Finally, the way our brain and memories changes over time is governed by the principle of synaptic plasticity. And essentially what this means is use it or lose it. And the more you access a specific memory or piece of information in your brain, the stronger it will be in your head. In your learning and revision, there are a few ways to take advantage of this through spending time forming associations and repeatedly coming across this piece of information. And this leads me to one of my favorite study techniques, space repetition, which is something that got me through medical school and my exams as a doctor. This is the art of repeatedly recalling information right before your brain forgets it. And by doing so, your brain learns it over and over again until it's strengthened and consolidated in your memory. This is an incredible technique that is really helpful for learning and revision. And I'll be making another video to talk about the science of this. So if you'd like to see that, press the subscribe button and stay tuned. The concept of memory and how we learn things is relevant regardless of whether you're trying to learn a skill, learn a piece of information or revising for exams. And it's something that we do from such a young age that we never really think about it or how exactly it happens. I personally found that understanding the various things like anatomy or the different pathways associated with memory formation really helps me to create an effective learning strategy, which is super important for when I was revising in medical school and even now as a doctor. So hopefully you understand the processes and the science a bit better and maybe even gain some information to impress your friends at your next dinner party or whatnot. In my next video, I'll be going through the specific techniques of how you can improve and increase your memory, including the art and science of space repetition. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe down below to follow my journey. But otherwise, that is it, and I will see you guys in the next video.